In this video, we're going to take a look at working with facial animation and see some of these specific techniques and issues surrounding how we approach it. Facial animation seems quite different to body animation in a number of ways. And certainly, you know, if folks have been practicing some basic body animation, they come on to try animating faces and, you know, they find it hard to apply the, you know, same stuff. However, the real secret to facial animation is the fact that it is no different to the body animation, to vehicle animation, bouncing ball animation, and everything else. The same principles still apply. Anticipation, overlap, arcs of motion, follow through, appeal, and all the rest are exactly the same in facial work as they are in any other kind of animation. Clearly, there are some things that won't happen. For instance, you know, if we look at the way that arms can behave like a pendulum when they're just sort of left to go, there aren't many parts of the face that are going to do that. If a character snaps their eyes open really quickly, the eyelids aren't going to flop about, you know, with this bouncy motion afterwards. I mean, they might do, depending on, you know, some crazy cartoon animation. But 99.9% .9 of the time, that's not going to be happening. The one thing that is most important in facial animation is the appeal part of it. It is the expression, it is how it communicates. With body animation, especially once you get into like, you know, performance based animation, we talk about having strong poses that communicate what the character is doing. And of course, we've seen as we've gone along, you know, small examples of how a character, you know, moves at different speeds or how we handle the transition from one piece of movement to another to try and illustrate, you know, a character's being alive, their awareness of their situation and so on. This can be read from body language. In facial animation, it's read from the facial language, the facial expression. This can be quite subtle and nuanced, and it's certainly a skill that has to be developed through practice and experimentation. And it's important because nothing will kill the appeal and the connection of a character to its audience faster than a dead, bland face that isn't really saying anything. And I don't mean not saying anything in terms of, you know, its words. I mean saying anything in terms of its pose, its expression. Now, way back at the beginning, of course, you know, we spoke about rigs and their importance as an animation tool for, you know, your animation work. And this is sort of doubly important when it comes to facial setups. An exceedingly common type of facial setup that I've seen any number of times is, of course, you know, having a set of phony morphs, where you have your character's mouth morphed into, you know, different shapes for ooh and ah, and e and mm, and, you know, so on and so forth. And you do lip syncing by, of course, you know, cross animating these morphs together. Although I've seen it done many, many times and seen many, many people, you know, approach a face in this way, I don't believe I have ever once seen a decent piece of facial animation done using this method. Or should I say done using that kind of rig? Because generally, that's what a phoneme-based setup is. Each phoneme is kind of like an individual rig control. You'll see it sometimes in, you know, facial example videos that folk have done in Maya and Max and so on. They've got, you know, a list of phonemes that they can click through. However, these aren't just modelled morphs into those phonemes. Rather, they are stored poses for an actual facial rig. Let's take a look at this guy here and see what we've got. You can see down here I've got this sync controller. And around the edges of it are marked out these different phonemes sk, e, a, r, o, u, w, n. And simply by animating around between these, like this, then of course, you know, we switch between these different phoneme shapes. And that's, you know, reasonably nice. Now, one thing that this sort of, you know, dial controller does is it offsets phonemes against one another. There's no way that I can be calling the R morph at the same time as the M morph. When people are just animating single phonemes, you know, as you go from the R position to the M position, you at some point wind up with this collision in the middle where you're 50% R, 50% M, and the, you know, face distorts. The mesh becomes this mix-up of, you know, crossing over morphs. 
So having a control like this, if you want to work with phonemes, is undoubtedly the best way to do it. You can set this up yourself using expressions or nodes, or of course you can use the joystick interface in something like Taffa. The idea is to build your phonemes in opposition to one another, and also in line with one another. So you see over here we've got w to m to s like this, so you get this line action across here. Down at the base, we've got O to R to A, so you've got this, you know, line of action here. Down the side, we've got this to E to A, like this, line of action. And over on the other side, we've got the W to the U to the O, like this, for a line of action. However, things like the W and the A are completely at opposite ends of the spectrum, like this. So, lines of morphs and opposition of morphs, the O and the E are opposite one another like this. This will give you a better working with phonemes. Nice as this is, however, of course, all it allows you to do is hit specific poses. What can be tricky with a control like this is getting a good transition, getting a good in-between. It can be very tricky to do. And so whilst your major poses might hit perfectly nicely, getting a good transition between one point and the next can sometimes make the face a little sort of clicky and stuttery. The other way is to have a set of controllers like we've got up top here, which give you a full control face system. In this case, of course, you can see that it's very easy to do arcs of motion with things. So if you've got a character going, whoa, sliding their jaw over from one side, to the other, that's very easy to, you know, make happen. As the, as the control moves around in an arc, the character's face moves around in an arc. You then, of course, have supplementary combination controllers that are used to actually, you know, put posing and shaping into the face like this, that allow you to, you know, get it just how you want it. And of course, that allows you to, as well, build asymmetry into your poses as you need to you wind up with what is a fully posable, controllable face, where you can really shape the face as it goes along. And of course you have this for the entire face, the mouth and the eyes and you know everything else is all working as one piece like this. It's more controls of course, it's more work to animate, but it does give you maximum control and allow you to shape your character's face just as you want it at every point in the animation on key poses and transitions. And as for your phonemes, of course, you just, you know, create them by putting the character's face into the necessary pose that you need it to be in to create a specific, you know, kind of shape like that. So this example rig that you've got is really a multi-rig, if you like. It's got a few different ways of being controlled. You can combine things together. So I could, for instance, use the O morph here. And if I wanted to push the jaw to the side, then I can do that using the jaw control here. However, you do have to be careful if you are mixing up controls like that, because of course, if I do the jaw open, then you get this, you know, crazy morph. Again, you've got two morphs that aren't supposed to be mixed acting on top of one another there. So you can use the sync control if you like and quite frankly if you want to do some you know basic lip syncing practice to get down your timing and your spacing and work on those skills for the face then you might find a good place to start is here with the sync control. You can also use the full face system that we've got here as well that's perfectly fine and then down here, where we've got these five little, you know, red markers, um, these are a little control system on the lip here. So this allows you to get, you know, refined little posing into the lip and mouth shape there. Again, you know, be careful in how you do this. If I, for instance, take the mouth corner up using this controller, but I simultaneously push the mouth corner down using that one, you tend to get an ugly deformation. So these controls complement one another, but of course, if you ask the rig for back to front or doubled up, you know, double transform poses, then things can get a bit ugly. The point of this rig really is just to give you, you know, a couple of different ways to operate 
control so that you can have a bit of experimentation in your own work. In this example that we're going to walk through, however, we are going to, for the most part, just use the full face rig along with little lip adjustments here and there. As well as, of course, you know, the little rig that we've got set up for actually animating the head and neck and eyes and so on that exists here. So having seen all of these, you know, little important factors and issues about how we actually have, you know, control laid out for the face, we'll break off this video here and then we'll begin in the next video to actually approach the business of the animation itself.